Okay. Acts chapter 3. <coughs> now in Sunday school we can interact and, uh, and communicate. Your comments are welcome, your questions or your thoughts. Uh, it's a little different than a preaching service in Sunday school, so if, um, if you want to interact, you're, you're certainly welcome to. Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple. You know, it's an important thing for Christians to be in unity. We that are members of the church, uh, it's, it's good to be in, uh, in, in unity. It's, uh, it's an important thing. Our, our church will not go forward un unless we're unified with the Heavenly Father and the Blessed uh, Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. We have to be in fellowship uh, with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and then that'll get us in fellowship with one another, and we can go forward in unity. The, ma the devil's the master of division and strife. He, always, he wants to have us fussing with one another. And, uh, and, and, and causing trouble. And, and sometimes, uh, sad to say, when, uh, when people come into the church and cause division, I, I know this isn't practiced hardly at all anywhere in, in churches today, but sometimes when people come uh, into the church and cause trouble and division and strife, they need to be excluded. And uh, sad to say that that's the way it is because we want to do everything we can uh, to promote uh, a unity. Uh, a church is supposed to be, now I know people come in to our church that aren't saved and hopefully they will get saved. And if they come in and behave themselves and listen and don't cause a problem, uh, they're, they're welcome because I want them to hear the gospel. But our, our goal is unity. And uh, so it says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple so they were together they were unified at the hour of prayer now you see all through the bible old testament and new prayer was always the major thing that's the way you get things from god you pray uh, without prayer uh you have uh you have nothing at all uh, and so prayer is is very important we uh we pray uh, I had, and for you that are in Sunday school, I'll announce this again in church, but uh, our dear beloved Doris uh, is in the hospital. Oh, no. And, uh, well, it's, uh, thank God for a wonderful miracle. The night before last, she had ter terrible pains at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then she notified her, her, her daughter, Sharon, at 6 o'clock in the morning. They took her to the uh to the emergency room at the hospital and they admitted her and uh, they gave her some medicine. She's had some problems off and on with urinary tract infection and, and but to make a long story short she did miraculously well and and uh, last night around 7 30 uh, uh, my wife and I went and visited her and had a wonderful visit with her and she's doing just fine. She of course was expecting to get out of the hospital she probably stay another day but be praying but but now the reason that i mean she's she ain't a kid you know uh she's up in years and 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 she had a recovery from the pain and agony that she had from the morning uh and uh, through the night through the morning it was unbelievable how she was at 7 30 at night just talking and communicating reading the bible with us and praying and and all of that but that's a miracle because she recovered in a few hours uh, like a teenager or someone in their 20s. You, 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 know, you know how young people, they, they boom, bounce back. You know, uh, when you get up in years, uh, uh, you don't bounce back fast usually if you bounce back at all. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not, uh, how old are you now, Billy Joe? 81. So it's not good news when an 81-year-old goes in the hospital because usually they're going to be there for a while or whatever. But they, and, but thank, uh, and, and, and look how Nancy, through prayer, was come out of there and doing better too, uh, Billy Joe's dear. So uh, Doris is doing well, and she sends her love. In fact, if I could figure it out, I've got to get it uh, from the uh, 
uh, I've got to get it from the, uh, I've, I've, I've got a little video of her talking. I just got to figure out how to get it from my smartphone to my smart TV. And the, the problems you have with getting stuff from a smartphone to a smart TV, if you're not too smart, it's a problem. <laughs> And I probably you don't, probably don't have to be real smart to do that, but I haven't figured it out yet. But <laughs> to this point in time, hopefully I will. Uh, so anyway, uh, now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer. So remember, prayer is so important. Prayer changes things. We have not because we ask not. Uh, being the ninth hour, and and of course we, we, we'll be talking about that in our our uh, church service this morning. I'll be preaching from John 14. <clears throat> and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Now, uh, if you have any interaction on it, you want to uh, say something about Doris or ask a question or whatever, something I didn't cover. This Sunday school, we talked together. Uh, and if you want to make comment on, on any things I've said so far, just put your hand up and, and we'll, uh, you know, we, you can interact or ask questions or whatever. Uh, so feel free to do that. And I don't want this just... Sunday school to be a preaching time uh, although if, if you don't want to speak I'll let it be that but it doesn't have to be and a certain man uh, <clears throat> lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple with which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple now he's not like the ones that are standing on uh, International Speedway in Redgewood today uh, uh, he's not like one of them, and, and some of them, healthy as a horse, uh, strong-looking man, says, I'm not lying to you, I just need a beer, uh, you know. And, and you know what? I think uh, with his honesty, uh, he's got a lot of drunks driving up and down the street that they work and they got a few dots, they give, they give money. Uh, he, probably, he, he probably does better than the one say in heaven eight in three days you know they ain't, ain't nobody in daytona beach you can eat every day in daytona beach there's food everywhere for you know, all you do is ask a couple questions on the street you can eat every day in daytona beach plenty of food out there but anyway back in the old days uh they uh, uh they had no government assistance they had no food stamps uh, they had uh none of those things i mean if you were crippled and couldn't do nothing you begged you were a beggar and we've got a lot of safety nets in America. Thank the Lord. Uh, I, I, I thank the Lord for every safety net we have in America. Uh, the, the, the thing that I don't like is crooks that take advantage of it. Yeah. People that, that, that really don't need it that are receiving it. You understand what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, what percentage do you think of people that don't really need help that are getting help. What, what, what percentage would you say? Anybody got, I just want to get your opinion. What, what, uh, anybody got an idea? What, what, what percentage do you think that are getting help that really shouldn't be? Too many. Huh? Too many. Yeah, give, give me a percentage, Gary. Do you have any idea? Probably half. Half. I would say 50%. I'd, I'd, I'd go with 50%. Are you talking about government help or local help? Government help. Well, uh, uh, well, the, uh, not only government help, but church help or any help, just help in general. Because uh, because I got uh, I got uh, uh, I got uh, professional uh, panhandlers that go from state to state. Sometimes they got a car and everything else. I'm not it, all, all, not not just from government, but uh, above it. Uh, uh, what 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 percent of them? Uh, really need help. Uh, Gary said 50%. I say 50%. Or more. Joanne says or more. Uh, anybody think less? How much less? No less. So, uh, so it's it's not just this old fundamental preacher that believes it's about 50%. Are we pretty well unified on that? That we think that that's about it? Because you see around, you've been around. So sad to say, but but this guy, he didn't have no choice but to beg. He was a uh, he was crippled. And which is called a, at the temple, which is called a, well, that, well, well, that's a good. Uh, back in those days, when you didn't have government assistance, and and uh, that'd be a good place to beg. So uh, uh, at the temple, because 
there were people, and usually if people honor God, they probably honor other folks and kind of give. You know, you, you, uh, hopefully uh, you should be better able to get something from someone that fears God and believes in God than just anybody out there, don't you think? That's why, uh, uh, that's why uh, grabby folks come to, not, there's needy folks come to the church too, I'm not saying that, but there's a lot of people that are just, Grabby, uh, where, where, where do they go? Uh, they, they're going on Ridgewood, stop at every church, every church. Yeah. And they'd be, they'd be, uh, and I send them here, and, and I'd say, well, sometimes I say, well, sometimes a Catholic church. Well, I've already been there, and how about this? Well, I've already been there. <laughs> they done made the rounds, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, to ask alms of them that had entered into the temple. So, uh, if you're going to ask for something. Generally, ask for someone who believes in God, someone to be around a temple or around a church. Uh, verse 3, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them alms. Of course, they were going in there at the, uh, what time was it? It was the hour of prayer, right? That's what it said in first, verse 1. It was our prayer, so they were going to church to pray. I've got out on our sign out in front. Uh, it says, house of prayer. And uh, we're a house of prayer somewhat. We should be more of a house of prayer. I'd like to see our church as that mega church in, in South Korea uh, is. Uh, I was talking with Sue, your friend Sue, yesterday. I dropped some clothes off at the cleaners there. Wonderful Christian people from South Korea that run a, uh, a cleaners. I'm going to tell you something. You want to have your uh, clothes done right at a reasonable cost. Uh, go to the cleaners. It's it's up here by Mason uh, and Ridgewood. What's the name of that cleaners? Acme. Acme Cleaners. Right behind Crystals. Yeah, it's 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 it, it's one. It's the next store down Mason by Crystals. Acme, and they're wonderful people. But I was talking to her about South Korea. Now you know, uh, and I was talking to her about South Korea, and North Korea, because. They're, you know, they're having these talks now and everything, and, and uh, I asked her some questions. She says, well, uh, North and South Korea, we're the same people, but North Korea is communist and, and against God, and South Korea is very Christian. And uh, I think maybe this thing might come together because the Christians in South Korea have been preaching. In fact, I've been talking. Uh, my, uh, my grandson, Andrew, has a, a good friend, a, a Christian boy, that goes to college there with him that his dad's a pastor has a church in south korea and uh, i'm i'm thinking very it looks like I'm, I'm trying to get something set up where i can go i'd like to go to south korea and preach i got that on my heart and, and people have well why south korea because that's what god put on my heart well why don't you go here the one because god put south korea on my heart and and I'm thinking uh, if God works it out, I'll go preach in uh, Paul's dad's church in, in South Korea. I don't know. I've never done that. I, there's a lot of preachers. They go all over the world preaching at different countries. Uh, I mean, local pastors like I am. I've never done that, but I, I, have a, I have a desire to do that right now, and I believe it's from God, and maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. I'm not sure, but I, I think it, it's kind of leaning that way. Uh, but anyway... Uh, this fella, uh, and, and he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter, oh, I'm sorry, let's go to verse 3. And seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them alms, asked them for some money. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he says, look, look on us. And he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something of them. So when, when he said, look on him, he thought he was going to dig in his pocket and give him some money. You know, that's, that's what he was seeking. Now listen what Peter said, verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Here's a poor preacher. Now, Peter was the main preacher in the first 12 chapters of Acts. Uh, he preached that blockbuster sermon in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. The church was 120, and then... Uh, the church went from 120 to 3,120. In one day, the day of Pentecost, as the power of the Holy Spirit came, we're going to be talking about that, about who the Holy Spirit is in, in church this morning from John chapter 14. We'll be in that in church this morning. But uh, uh, he had had uh, 3,000 saved and baptized and added to the church. 
but he was a, he was a poor preacher. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. So Peter had something that was better than money. You see, the gospel is better than money. But, you know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money is the root of all. You got to have money. You got to, you know, you got to buy toilet paper. You got to buy potatoes and eggs. You got to put gas in your car. You got to fix flat. I don't know. You need, uh, that's the way we do it. You know, back many, many years, you know, hundreds of years ago, they used to barter. They used to trade the corn for a cow or what, and different things like that. But now uh, our, our source is to, to use money. And, uh, and, and so uh, you, you got to have it to exist uh, here. Uh, although, well, I guess it's still money, but it's all going to plastic now. You can't, <laughs> everything's in, done on, on plastic. Everything is, you know, it's a plastic world we live in. But such as I give thee, but such as I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Now, you see, he said here, in the name of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, remember this. Any miracle that Jesus did or any miracle that Peter did or John did or any, any, any of uh, the Lord's disciples, any miracles that they did uh, in, the, in the Bible were done in the name of Jesus Christ. And the physical miracle was done to glorify Christ and to bring people to the Savior. Do you understand that? That's, that's why it was done, because... This event in Acts chapter 3, it was talked about on as we go on in Acts 4, in Acts 4 and 5 and so on. Uh, there, was, there was a big fuss uh, uh, made about it. Of course, the, op the opposition of Christ uh, calls Peter a false teacher and denies Jesus. Same thing today. Same thing today. Uh, that's, uh, that's the way it is. But so... Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. So the miracle was done, but he uh, he didn't do it. He didn't do it in he didn't do it in Peter's name, did he? Like a lot of these healers today, they bring the glory to their self. You fill their name in. I don't. There's there's a ton of them out there. Someone uh, uh, who was it? Oh, my grandson told me here's so and so. I just seen it on the on the on the internet. Uh, one of these health and wealth and going to heal you preachers. I didn't even know his name. It was an unknown name to me. I know a lot of their names, but he gave the name and uh, and it showed how uh, he had asked, uh, uh, he had put a call out on, uh, on the internet uh, for a jet, but not only a jet, but a certain... Duplantis. Huh? Jesse Duplantis. Yeah, it, oh, is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, the, I don't know that name. His fourth jet. Oh, this is his fourth jet. But but he named the name of it. It's probably better than one, two, and three. This was probably bigger and better. Well, he said if Jesus was here today, that he wouldn't be riding on a donkey. He'd be riding in Jesse's jet, spreading yeah. the gospel across the world. Well, 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 let me tell this evangelist, whoever he was, uh, he didn't need Jesse's jet in that in this day or that day because it said when they tried to get him or kill him, he just he's gone. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Jesus could go immediately. He could go to the moon in a second. You know he don't need no jet. He, <laughs> he don't know who. Uh, uh, he don't know. But anyway, but but you know, and and these hustlers, <laughs> they've got they had three jets and they'll get number four. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Jesus was on a donkey because he wanted to be like everybody. He didn't want to be just like the common folks, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was, a, in fact, uh, the, the, the biggest example that Jesus can be for us is the humble servant. You understand that? He was lowly and, and, and meek in heart and meek in spirit. We got to learn that from Jesus. He wasn't like these uh, high minded preachers that got to fly around in jets and. And uh, prosperity. Uh, usually, the only ones getting rich are them. Amen. <laughs> they tell you, you grease their palms and get them jets, and then you'll be blessed. Uh, and uh, do you know why people follow those kind of preachers? They're selfish. They're selfish and self-seeking. They make them feel well. You're a child of God. You can't be sick. You can't be poor. If you're poor, it's your fault. 
If you're sick, it's your fault. And they have many people, well-meaning people, that come up in wheelchairs to the front of their church and are, uh, and are just heartbroken. Many of them even commit suicide because they don't think they're good enough Christians to be healed. God doesn't want to heal everybody. He doesn't want to. Paul, the great apostle Paul, he asked three times uh, to be healed of his infirmity in the flesh. And, and God told him, no, you're going to keep your uh, in, infirmity because I got to keep you humble. And then Paul said, yeah, I'll keep the infirmity because he says, when I am weak and when you and I are weak, then we're strong because our strength is what? In the Lord. The Lord is always strong. I can always be strong in the Lord, not in me, but in the Lord. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Wow. Kind of like Doris in the hospital yesterday. <laughs> He's supposed to. You don't heal fast when you're over 60. Believe me, Doris is over 60. <laughs> you don't believe. You don't believe. And by the way, she's my Lord's Supper person. This is the first Sunday of the month. We're not. We're not gonna. I probably should have figured she will. You know, have a backup plan, but it didn't. So we're not gonna have. Uh, uh, I can't find the link. Here's her. Here's her. I can't find the link. Uh, Sharon, it's Gabriel Varga on Facebook, and you can find it on there. That's the link, Gabriel Varga. That's all it is, Gabriel Varga. And uh, Sharon, her. I, I told her to let let Doris watch this. Well, she can't hear me because she ain't on there. <laughs> Somebody text her. Anybody that's what Becky text her and tell her Gabriel Varga. Becky found it. She knows. Text Sharon and tell her uh, where it is so he could help her out. I believe Becky's her friend. Uh, so anyway, uh, and he took him by the right hand, lifted him up. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaped, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, we were praising, we were praising God last night. We was there in the hospital room. I guess it was after visitation time. I could stay later because I'm a preacher. If I'm someone's pastor, I'd come in time go in there. And uh, we were praising God after 8 o'clock, up to 8.30, going on 9 o'clock. I got there about quarter to 8. And... Uh, we were praising God. I'm surprised one nurse didn't come up and tell us to shut up because we were getting kind of noisy. You know? <laughs> it's a hospital. You ain't supposed to raise cane in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> they were they were kind. They come by, get, looked in a couple times, and they, even a couple of nurses come in, take temp, you know, that kind of stuff. But but they were nice. They, they they're nice at that. I, I like that hospital. She's in the uh, uh, Halifax on Dunlop in Port Orange. Yeah, she's in Halifax on Dunlop in Port Orange. Uh, but this is it. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where Nancy was. Yeah, I like it there. No, that's where you was when I visited over there. Yeah. Yeah, Nancy was in there too. I've been in there too. When I go to emergency, I, I'll go there. Oh, you get a lot quicker in emergency there uh, than you will at uh, at the Halifax on International. Now, now they do, I'll say this about Halifax on International. It's a bigger hospital, and, and, and they have more. Because I asked I asked the doctor last time I was at uh, Halifax uh, on Dunlawton in Port Orange. I asked the doctor that uh, talked to me. I says, I like it over here. It seems to be a little easier. And, and, and I says, are, are, are you as well equipped as they are? He says, no, we're not. If it's trauma cases, you know, real bad, or, or you know, then they, uh, they don't bring them over there. They... They take them over there because there, there's some better equipment. Basically, in general, uh, I, I'd, I'd rather go there than uh, than the other one, the specialized thing. And he leaping up, stood, walked, and entered into them in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, there's something. To, I wish you folks could learn to praise God more. You know why you don't? You know why Christians don't praise God more? They're too worldly. You got too much worldliness in you. 
Well, I don't drink and smoke. That's good. But you, but you can be worldly without drinking and smoking, you know. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just saying, if you're right with God, you can't do nothing but praise God and hoop and holler and shout and have joy. You know that? I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you say, well, I don't have that. You don't know the troubles I got. Well, check it out. They're probably most of your own problem. You probably brought it all on yourself, most of it. How, how, how many of you bring trouble on yourself? Yeah. Yeah, we bring trouble on ourselves, and then we try to blame someone else, don't we? <laughs> it's always the blame game, isn't it? We, we usually try to blame the ones that are closest around us. Morning. And leaping stood up, entering and praising God. Verse 9, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Everybody's seen it. You see, when someone gets healed, when someone gets right with God, uh, it glorifies the name of Jesus to someone else. What happened? That person been, uh, uh, was he, uh, and certain man lame from his mother's womb. I mean, this, this person was crippled all his life, amen? I mean, he had never walked. And all of a sudden, he's leaping and praising God because of who? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in Acts chapter 3, verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat at for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And here now, 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 now here it comes. Now here, now here was a miracle, okay? Uh, he healed the one that come from his mother's womb, and it didn't didn't uh, uh, and never walked at all, and he was healed. And so now, now because of that healing, he said it was because of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now look at verse eleven. Here comes the kicker now, and if you have questions on this or want to make comment, uh, please do. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. I mean, he didn't just get healed. He, uh, uh, he didn't just uh, jump and praise God. He hugged their neck. Amen. If someone going to, if, if you never walked, if you never walked in your life and someone healed you, you would only jump and shot. You probably hugged their neck. Amen. I mean, he had never walked and since he was born. He never walked. And all of a sudden he had miraculous healing instantaneously. Uh, 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 through the hands of Peter, who was filled with the Holy Ghost, and 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 so Peter and John had the power, and this this layman hugged their neck, Amen. And all the people ran together unto them on the porch that is called uh, Solomon's, greatly wondering. Verse twelve. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. Now here it comes. What was the event? A man that never walked from his mother's womb was healed. Did God heal then? Yes. Can God heal now? Yes. Not like the fakers. Not like the ones that fake it and plant people in the audience and 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 uh, and they got uh, uh, they got microphones in their ear and and they got their people talking to people. Then they tell them in their ear and and they say, "Oh, Jay." Someone told him his name is Jay. No, look, tell them about Jay's background. <laughs> it's Jay. He's been a, been a criminal since his youth. No, they didn't say that, Jay. <laughs> they didn't say that. They do that. These these uh, uh, these modern day crooked false preachers. They do that. They got people with microphones in their ear, and they, they, they and, and they tell the they tell the. The crooked preacher like that one. Where, what, what, what was that guy's name again? Uh, you said, I never heard the guy in my life, but he's yeah. the one. I guess he had been on the news or something because my grandson, he says on the news, uh, 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 he was getting a new jet for millions of dollars, and he had three jets. This is number four. Yeah, 54 million. <laughs> 54 million. And he, he even named what kind of jet it was, yeah. didn't he? It's, it's the finest made right now. Is it? Yeah. That's what he had to have. Well, see, God to told him that too, right? One other than him that has four personal jets is Donald Trump. Oh, really? So he wanted 
four jets. Yeah, well, well, Trump's got them, and and uh, 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 the world's got them. But Trump made the money and bought them. You know, <laughs> this guy hustled people to get the money. At least uh, you can say what you want about Donald Trump. He made a lot of money. And I don't believe he's a Christian. I believe he's way too proud and arrogant. I don't think he's a Christian. Some say he's a Christian. I don't. I don't know. I don't think I'm wrong because you you got to humble yourself and repent to be a Christian. I don't think he's ever done that. I don't know. If I'm wrong, forgive me, Lord. But I don't think so because I've never heard him give a testimony of repentance and salvation. Uh, 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 but if he's got, uh, uh, um, if you're a billionaire, you can buy all the jets you want. <laughs> That's the way it is, because you you know you can say whatever you want. Well, he, I, I, I tell you one thing: you can't take away from Donald Trump. How old is he? Seventy. Seventy-one. That's a hard-working man. He don't sleep but a few hours a day. I mean, he works. I mean, every day. These past presidents. You, uh, if, if if you've seen their face on television once every six months, oh, the president, oh, the president. <laughs> you see Trump's puss in the, in the every day. He's on, he's on, every day. And he's at an event, and, and he's there, and he's there. And where was he? I saw yesterday. He, and then he gets on the, on the television, but he works. He works hard. And where was, I think he's with Coast Guard or something yesterday. And then uh, on Memorial Day, he was at the... Uh, Arlington Cemetery, and I made mention of that. They sang that wonderful song, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Had to, and they had the Marine Choir singing. I loved it. That last verse I love. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. His truth is marching on. Come on, sing it with me. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I love that song. Every time they sing it on Memorial Day or another time, uh, we might, we're going to sing it in church today. We we'll open the hymn. We'll sing all the verses. Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man. Well, you see, man has no power but the power that God can work through them. You understand that? Verse 13. The God of Abraham. Abraham was, the, we call him the father of faith. Abraham. And the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up. Okay, here, here he's talking to these uh, uh, wicked people. He had delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Pilate, Pilate didn't want to crucify him, did he? <clears throat> Remember what Pilate's wife did? She come to him and said, man, I dreamed last night. Don't mess with him. <laughs> let him go. He got an incredible. A lot of times your wife can give you good advice. My wife, over over uh, 58 years of marriage, many times she'd give me some, some good advice. Sometimes I take it. Sometimes I don't. And uh, and that's that's the way it is. But sometimes you get some uh, uh, good advice. So remember that. Remember that, David. Sometimes Lisa give you good advice. Has she give you good advice before? Yeah, yeah all the time, all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is she giving you good advice all the time, or giving you advice all the time? A little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. <laughs> My wife too. Same way. Same same old thing. It's all the same way. <laughs> Got to filter it out, right? But sometimes I miss the filter, and and I don't and I don't get it, and then I have to tell her, "Honey, you's right about that." I have to tell her that. <laughs> yeah, I do it like that. <laughs> Verse fourteen. But ye denied the Holy One and the Just and desired a murderer to be granted to you. Remember that. Um, what was his name? Do you remember the murderer's name? Uh, Barabbas. Barabbas. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. Barabbas, the murderer. They they freed him. Verse 15, and killed the prince of life, 
whom God had raised up from the dead, wherefore ye are witnesses. Verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, and the faith which is by him, Jesus, hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So here, what did, what did uh, Peter do? He tied in the miracle of the healing of the man that was crippled since he was born into the gospel of Christ. And he gave Jesus Christ all the credit. And he said the reason that this man was healed was because of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who they shamefully took and crucified, and he was raised from the dead. You get it? So remember that. When we preach today, uh, God always does healing. Uh, uh, God healed uh, uh, Doris in the hospital yesterday when she went in so sick in the morning, and 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 she's elderly, and 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 she recovered quickly, quicker than a teenager would have recovered. And and when I'm talking, when we were there last night, my wife and I, uh, she was just reading the Bible and praying with us just like normal. And I mean, that was just within a, a period, of, and she was quite sick in the morning. She said she had pain. Uh, in the morning, uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then told her daughter at 6 and went to the emergency room, she said she had had pain like she never had before. I mean, uh, uh, worse than when she had heart problems, you know. And Waited so... Waited four hours. Huh? Waited four hours to call her daughter. Yeah, yeah. Waited and so days. and so that, that that's the way it is. Wow. She, just pull, pull on it. Pull the door. There you go. That's our new system. It's our new system. You just got to pull on it. <laughs> hey, you know what? It opens at a certain time and it locks at a certain time. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Bill, I was just telling him about Doris. We're just going to finish up Sunday school. She had to go to the hospital yesterday morning. I don't know if I told you that. Did I talk to you? No, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but a miraculous miracle. Uh, she had the worst pain, she said, ever, at 1 o'clock in the morning, night before last, and uh, and it, it presided, it kept on, it, it wouldn't quit, and, and her daughter took her at uh, in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then I was there with her last night uh, with my wife at, at, uh, at quarter to 8, we got there at quarter to 8 in the evening, and she was just, she's perfect. We read the Bible and prayed, and and I mean, I mean, talking about an elderly woman, it's just, it, it was, it was nothing but the hand of God. Um, of course, it's, it's parallel to what we're studying here in Acts chapter three today about this man that was, that was paralyzed since he was born and Peter immediately healed him, but he gave God all the glory. He took no glory. Like many healers today, they take the glory and they, and uh, they don't have the name of Jesus up there. They got their name up there, you know. <laughs> that's a that's a big problem, and I tell you what, God won't God won't share the glory with anybody. He says he's gonna he's gonna demand the glory. This has been good in in Acts chapter three, hasn't it? We're we're kind of going in Acts for the day of the week, uh, I mean, for the day of the month, and and uh, this is the third chapter, and we're gonna have and you that are on Facebook. See, we got quite a few people on Facebook this morning. Um, we're gonna have a great time in John chapter fourteen. And we're going to be talking. We preached on that a couple times last week. But we're going to be on the emphasis of the Holy Spirit and what the Lord has to say about it. And so uh, we're going to we're going to cash out of Sunday school here now, and uh, we'll be back on uh, Facebook uh, a little after ten. But we're going to quit now for about fifteen minutes. So, uh, Lord, thank you now for Acts chapter three and this marvelous miracle of the crippled man from his mother's womb miraculously healed, and Peter preaching this marvelous sermon, blockbuster sermon. He just preached one <laughs> on the day of Pentecost. Now here comes another great one. And, of course, he was the main preacher, the main leader in the first 12 uh, book of Acts. So uh, help us now. Give us a great sermon. Give us a great service today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.